Welcome to J Lo Artist. Thanks for being here. I appreciate your support and all those who have come out and uh, commented. Those of you who are drawing with me. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for being with me here today. Art makes life better. Let's make your life better. Okay, so just as a recap, we started out by getting that all wet with our off brush. Got it all wet. We dabbled in some color. And we just let it kind of move itself around, do its its own thing. If you want to create some edges around those clouds and you think, well, some of those edges are a little gray on the gray side, how would you take that orange and tone it down and make it gray? What color would you use for that? And since we're not using black, what do you got? Yeah, maybe a little tiny bit of purple. Uh, orange and blue are complementary colors. So if you use the orange, it's going to turn kind of brownish. But if you use a little purple, it might turn a little bit more on the red side. So you could probably do just a tiny bit of purple. I'm going to try it and see what happens. Just a teeny tiny bit of purple. Lots of water. And it looks gray, but if you had used black, it would have been kind of poopy. Color is always best. So I don't know if you can see that, but it, it's just a little bit of that grayness in there. This is just a sl slight bit of purple, just tiny bit. I, in fact, if you if you dip your brush in water, that saturates your brush, and then just touch it in the purple, barely, barely touch it. And if you think, oh, that's too much in my brush, then maybe what you want to do is do a little bit on the mountainside. And as you do the mountains, don't go so smooth. Let it, let your brush kind of shake a little bit. And it's going to look like uh, trees and, you know, little variated stuff up in there. If this is a specific place and you want everybody to know where it is, you may want to be more exact in your heel configuration. So just barely, barely, barely touch your brush in the paint. You don't need much paint. Now the top part we did was called wet on wet. It was wet and we put wet paint into it and it bled and did its thing. This is called wet on dry. This is dry. We got our wet brush. We just lay a little bit into it and you're going to get sharper edges. It's not going to bleed into it. Either way, use pure color. And if you, if you feel like that, that's not quite the right color and you think, oh, I wish it was a little peachier or pinker or something, you may want to just touch the red, just barely touch the red. And you could dab that in. That might be a little bright. That's a little bright. So looking at that, you're like, oh, somebody bled all over it. Just take your brush, nice and wet, and move that around. Actually, some of that peach might be kind of nice up in the sky. Maybe I'll take some of this, pull it out of here, and put it put it in up here. That's kind of nice.
cool thing about illustration board too is you don't have to affix it to anything. You just paint it the way it is, and when it dries, it'll dry flat. As long as you don't get it too soppy wet. So here, where I put that peach, I think, oh, that, that's just too strong of an edge. You just get it wet. Because it was already wet, it'll, it'll seep into it, and you'll get this nice peachy tone, and the edges will fuzz out. Nice, soft, cloudy edges. So, remember when we were doing charcoal? You guys had the same attitude toward charcoal. It's messy, it's hard to control, and yet you guys ended up doing some lovely things with charcoal. And hopefully, your attitude has changed a little bit, I love this purple in, in that, just looking awesome. And the closer you get, more contrast, more, more darks you need in there. My camera doesn't quite know what to do with all this, and so it's not picking up things like it should. And just thin it right out. Whatever you need, just keep it thin. And if you want it soft and fuzzy, get it wet first. If you put in too much water, just take your, your towel, dab your brush, and then just touch it, and that brush will suck it up. It's like a little sponge. Now, you can always go back into your sky and say, well, gee, now that it's dried a little bit more, maybe I want to, you know, try some new things or put some more into it. You could. Just don't rub it very much. So you can take your water and you can, you can go back over it with all that water. But if you rub it now, all that stuff is going to kind of change a little bit. You can still drop color into it. If you rub it too much, it's going to, all that texture that you got going on is going to go away. You, you don't want that texture to go away. You can add to it and layer in colors if you'd like. Use that water, that un unpredictability to your advantage. Let it do its thing. Let it just go and happen. And sometimes it's surprising. You think, wow, that looks really good. And I, I really didn't do it. It just kind of did itself. And just keep doing that, moving down, adding a little bit more pigment, more pigment. This little section down in here has kind of a mist that's laying on it. It's kind of a light blue. 
So you may want to go into that. Take your, your water. Just lay some water down into that. Dip your brush once in your water. Touch the blue. And then just layer it down in there. Let it just buzz. Those little trees that you see along the uh, horizon, those are going to be the last things you do. Whenever you need pure water, just use that other brush. I had a friend that did water paints. She'd use a squirt bottle. She had a little squirty bottle and went... Then usually the space was a little bit larger. I'm going to start incorporating a little more green into this. I've got my, I've got my, uh, my kind of purpley red kind of color, and then I'm just going to incorporate a little bit of green into that. The, the amount of red that's in there is going to counteract the green and kind of dull it out a little bit. Well, that green is a little on the yellow side, so I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow to it. As it gets closer, and again, I can come back into that and do some sharper type things like those little trees in the background. If I grab a little bit of that purple. And go in there and say, well, little tree, all these little trees back in there. What kind of trees are those? Cypress trees? plain old purple against some of those and that kind of helps bring that out. You could do, uh, you know, if there, this little mountainside there, little rocks or whatever that's down in there. Remember, things that are at a distance are fuzzier, softer. So if they tend to fuzz out a little bit, that's good. You don't want them to be so tight that you look at them and go, oh, I see all those limbs and things. Now, this little technique that I'm doing here, uh, all that paint that's that I've done is drying up. It's it's dry enough that it's it's fairly. Uh, and so I'm using what we call the dry on dry technique. My brush has very little water in it. It's not goopy. It's it's pretty dry. This is my dry on dry technique. <clears throat> so Paul Gauguin would be very happy with this because we're doing this is like impressionism. We're using pure colors to get landscapes and things like that without having to worry too much about our subject matter not really important what it is. I don't know, maybe it is to you. But to the person who's just looking at pictures, 
they're probably thinking to themselves, wow, this is really nice. So as you're moving forward, things get a little brighter, a little tighter, a little more contrast. This is called scumbling, where you put in a little edge, and while it's still wet, you take your brush and you just kind of hit those edges and scumble them a little bit. I know you think I made up that word, don't you? You like scumble? That's not a word. Most painters will know what you mean when you say scumble. I don't know, I've never looked it up in the dictionary. It might not even be it. Wouldn't be the first time I made up a word. That's what my art professor used to call it, scumbling. So just for my own amusement, I'm going to hit this villa right now and start out with some, some green, maybe a little brown in the green, maybe a little purple in that, nice and dark. Here's those trees, those cypress trees. I'm just going to, with my brush, I'm just going to draw in the villa. Lots of different ways to do this. So, the reason I chose green is because there was quite a bit of red in the brick and in the roof. Red and green are complementary colors, so I knew that I could use that green to my advantage to take that red and make it look kind of brown. So remember, go ahead and just layer in your colors. Don't be too concerned if it's not exactly what you want right now, because you can always layer over it. So I got this wet where the trees are, and I know that this is going to fuzz out and, and do its thing because it's all wet. I'm just going to layer in some of the darks and dabble it in with the tip of my brush. I can come back in and do little branches and things if I need to. But just let it sit there like this, and it will, it will do all sorts of things while it's Kind of moving itself about and as it dries it'll dry differently i 
Don't be concerned it's not exactly what you want right now. It won't be. We block in those shapes of dark and light. The farther things are in the distance, the more blue they are. All this lawn in the front, nobody cares about that lawn. Just get it wet, dabble in your color, and it'll look like grass. Whatever you're doing, trees, like little bushy trees, think of a fan or, you know, like fingers like, like this. You start out this way and just kind of go in a little fan shape with your brush. So there's one tree. Here's another one on top. Leave a little space in between so the leaves can have some place to hang out. for coming along with this little journey with me today. Your company is always a great pleasure. I hope you guys have a lovely day. And remember, art makes life better. <laughs>